Good morning, congregation of the Most High. We always want to give uh, the most praises to our Creator. I want to thank Brother Brian for the song selection. I couldn't even sing the song completely because of all that Jesus has done for me in my life, where he has brought me from. It's totally amazing. You know, I just went and done my taxes yesterday. And I didn't want to go do them because in the past I've been paying After 24 years, I finally got a tax return. Yay! <laughs> First time, so I'm celebrating. But you know, our Father is very gracious. You see, can we see the Father? Can we see him? Has anyone on this earth today seen the Father? Can you see electricity? Can you see it? You may see a spark, right? I've never seen electricity, and I've never seen the Father. But we can see the manifestation of electricity. How? By seeing the lights the manifestation of electricity. We can't see the Father, but we can see the manifestations of his children. And that came through Jesus Christ. You know, John said in uh, St. John chapter 3 and verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, the last time I was here, the last time I was here, I noticed that I said, <laughs> I said, uh, for the scripture reading, by the way, I want to thank brother, uh, as I read the scripture text, brother Carlos, was that you or was it brother Pete that read the text? Brother Pete, you know, Brother Pete, he said, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 16, right? And the last time I was here, I said, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. When I look back, I heard someone say, hey, it's uh, 1 Timothy 3, you know? So as men, as people, we make mistakes. We make mistakes, but our completion where we are made whole is according to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10, for ye are complete in him which is the head of the body. So when I listen to my uh, sermons to see where I fall short or whatever, I realize that my completeness, my wholeness, that word complete means whole is in Christ. There is the perfection. So, I get it right this time. We learn from our mistakes. First Timothy, by the way, Brother Derek called me this morning and said, hey, what's the text for the day? I, I have forgot then, that quick. I'm studying and reading. I have so much, so, so much of uh, the spirit ro rolling through me, I couldn't remember at that point in time, but then it came to me. First Timothy chapter three, verses 14 through 16. Paul tells Timothy, I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. 
Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up into glory. So, you know, if there is any doubt concerning what is being taught, you can always come and ask me questions. You can call me. I can be reached. And we can talk about the true realities of life. Yes, this life is real. It's not a dream. It's not a fantasy. It is real. But my point is that it is not the whole reality of life, the true reality of life. We understand that the sun and moon was created by the creator for this physical universe, but pushing forward into eternity. Book of Revelation says there will be no need for the sun. None of that for the father and the son will be the light in the new order to come. We must understand that all things here today is just the shadow of the truth as we pick up from my last point. We want to talk about uh, the furtherance. Even the Ten Commandments are only a shadow. Was anyone on this, is anyone on this earth today was present back when Moses gave, <laughs> gave the commandments? No. Is that institution, is that order still in uh, practice today? No. Why? Because we have a new order. That which was in the past that was set up by Moses was a shadow. According to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1, you can read from chapter 10 verses 1 through 10, but we won't do that. For since the law was but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, It can never by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near. The point is this. The commandments a shadow, not the true realities, you see. And we understand that in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, holy brothers... You who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all of God's house. We are in God's house today. Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone. But the builder and maker of all things is God. You see, Jesus built this house. It cost him his life. You see, it cost our Lord his life. So Christ is the reality of all things as in Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40 concerning the, uh, the greatest commandment. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. You see, he silenced the Sadducees because the Sadducees, when you read up before that, didn't believe, they, didn't, they don't believe in the resurrection. So they asked him a question concerning the seven brothers and the one lady. They all had her and they died. They want to know who's going to be 
you know, hers in, in, in the resurrection. Jesus told them you err in not knowing the truth nor the power of God. So, so many mistakes are made today because people don't know the power in the word of God. So he goes on to say in verse 34, Matthew 22, Pharisees, they gathered together, verse 23, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love thy God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. This is the, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law in the prophets. So we have laws of how we ought to treat one another, the love that we should have for our father and the love that we should have for our neighbor. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, I do believe it is, it says, for do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. That is one of the golden rules, you know, you wouldn't, if, if, if you a thief and you running around here stealing from everybody and then you slip up and, and someone gets you, I guarantee you, you're not going to like that. You're not going to like it. So the church must bear the truth, the reality, as we know that all buildings are built by someone. The church must be the pillar in the base of this universal reality which is Christ himself is the true reality. When we look back on the, uh, the children of Israel and their travels, we look and see how God told them that in the book of Deuteronomy, how that he would place his name. By placing his name means that his presence would be there. In Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 5, but you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose out. Is there that place becomes the habitation of God? Verse 18 in Deuteronomy 12. But you shall eat them before the Lord, your sacrifices, your God, in the place that the Lord your God will choose. You and your sons and your daughters, your male servants and your female servants, and the Levite who is within your towns, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all that you undertake. That is what the Lord has pleasure in, in us eating and rejoicing. You see, verse 21 in Deuteronomy 12. If the place that the Lord your God will choose to put his name. There is too far from you. Then you may kill any of your herd or your flock, which the Lord has given you as I have commanded you. And you may eat within your towns wherever you desire. That's if you are far away. So if you are far away and if you are near, you must hold to the commands of the Lord when it comes to sacrificing and eating. You see, the Lord said that he will put his name where my name is, there my habitation will be. The church of Christ, the body of Christ today is where he has placed his name. It is where his habitation is today. You see, the world is blind of this fact, but we hear of the children of the Most High God through obedience of the gospel which was taught us. You see, as we spoke about the manifestation of God, us being that manifestation like the manifestation of electricity, we can see that, right? So this is the true meaning of the house of God and the pillar and the base of the truth. See, we stand on this base because it is the foundation that God has laid for, for other foundation can no one lay than that which Christ Jesus has laid. We know that. 
think that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. You see? So what do we have here? The church is the continuation and the multiplication of the manifestation in the flesh. That's what we are today. We must believe that. We must know that we are children of the Father. As in John 1 and 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus knew that he come to this earth to give his life as an eternal sacrifice to the Father. As we read in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to purge our conscience from dead works that we may serve the true and live in God. You see, in John 12 and 24, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. For this reason is that the Apostle Paul put these two verses together. See, apart, you get a seed and you set that seed right there, that's where that seed going to lay. Until you put it in the ground, that's where the manifestation takes place. So the manifestation of God in the flesh has very much to do with the church being the house of God and the pillar and the base of the truth. Let us understand that we are the living body of Christ in a certain place, right? We are really the house of God and the pillar and the base of the truth. Be thankful that the Lord opened your eyes and your ears and gave you an understanding to receive his engrafted word to save you and sanctify you, right? That word you includes I also. We are the increase, the enlargement of the manifestation of God in the flesh. God manifested himself again in the flesh, but in a different way. You see, us, that's that different way. It's no longer the only begotten son, but Jesus told an individual, he said, go and tell my brothers I will meet them in such and such a place. He moved away from Jerusalem, right? So, this is the principle of the New Testament. The principle of incarnation is what Jesus did. The resurrection of our Lord, right? Which is simply God himself manifesting himself. You see, Jesus always pointed back to the Father in the things in which he did. He always did it because the Father is so great to where he had to send his son to do it. And now we see the evidence. So, yes, the church is the manifestation of God. and It is the manifestations of doctrines and gifts, but we have gotten away from all the gifts, but because, because that is no longer necessary. Gifts to heal the blind and the crippled is no longer necessary. So the church must have God in Christ through the spirit manifested. We just don't dwell on doctrines. But yes, we must understand doctrines. You see, the living God dwelling in us is not a matter of doctrine. As John says in 2 John in verse 9, whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ has not God, but whosoever abided has both the Father and the Son. So yes, doctrine is important, but the inner life and how it is manifested in us is greater than doctrines. We must understand that it is greater than doctrines, you see. See, the church is not built by outward change. It's not about 
outward change. See, the living God dwelling in us is not a matter of doctrine. According to our daily walk, you know, most Christians really don't have the true concept or the belief of how the inner life of Christ is working in us. We must come in contact with that inner life and not get the physical crossed up with the spiritual. Say in John 4 and 24, those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because it is hard to distinguish that. But the word of God tells us that in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and, and verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. That's how it is. It's, it's very hard to do that, but the word of God can cut right through it to let us know the thoughts and in the intentions of the heart. You see, the word of God is living, so we must treat it as living, not just some book of learning. We should be teaching life what we should be teaching. It's a matter of life in Christ as our life. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 13, you have people that are teaching certain things today that are leading millions astray There's only one way that you can come into the body of Christ. Anything that's not in the body of Christ is outside. God judges those outside. We understand that, right? Purge the evil person from among you. God judges those outside. In 1 Peter 4 and 17 and 18, for it is time for the judgment to begin where? At the household of God. That's us. And if it begins with us, what, be, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? We must realize that God judges the outsiders they're condemned already. But for us, righteous are scarcely saved. So we have to look at and look within ourselves and ask ourselves the question, where am I falling short? So that I can make sure that I am in an upright standing of the creator. You see, when, when, when people uh, strive to lead people astray, and most high God, Romans chapter six and verse 17. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. You see, we have grasped the truth. We eat it. We meditate on it. And it is expressed in an outward way. You see, the way that the world is going about worshiping and doing things for the Lord, this is not the Lord's way. What we need today is, is not just a change of clothes, but a change of blood is what we need. We need the blood of Christ in our lives, you see. So you have people in the world today who goes by the term pastor or reverend, uh, 
perhaps clergymen or wear a collar backwards or, or whatever you may have. These are the things that you do not see in the body of Christ, in the church of Christ. You don't see that. You, you, you will not see that. If you do see it, then there is a problem. You see, for us, the church, we have a mingling of, of the Father within us. So we know the truth. We can see falsehood when it come at us through the scriptures. We can see that, you see. So this is just a picture of what the true reality is today concerning where we stand. We must continue to push forward, but in a vertical sense. It's what we do in the body of Christ. So the church is not built on just mere teachings. But like I said, doctrine and teachings are very important. We learn things through stories of the Bible concerning uh, how we are to become saved, you see. But we must continue to hold on to our faith and what we believe in as true children of God and not be ashamed to tell people the truth when it comes to the matter of Christ. Because today you have billions of people worshiping. Billions. And all of those that are not practicing uh, the teachings and following the instructions that are in the scriptures, uh, the glorious gospel, then they stand on a different level than us. We must pray that the individuals that you may come in contact with, that the word sparks an entrance toward the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, this, I'm closing up right now. That which we are a part of, according to Matthew chapter 7. All of us, we probably know that. These scriptures by heart. And so, have you built your house on the rock? Everyone, when he hears the words of mine, and does then will be likened, will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And when everyone hears the words of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the winds, the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. You see, the house that we are a part of is built on the rock. As Christ told Peter in Matthew chapter uh, 16, verses 13, throughout that, the rest of that book, that chapter, he told him, yes, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why? Because what God is doing, anything in its way, will get rolled over by this boulder, which is the foundation of Christ. We understand in, he, in uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing through the word of God. And Luke, what is that Luke? Where he speaks concerning repent 
or perish. That's in Luke. Is that Luke 3? No, not Luke 3. That scripture is running away from me. But we must repent or perish. See, in, in, in Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, we are told that Jesus told them to go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. You see, these are instructions that the Lord has given us. I want to thank the congregation here for giving me the opportunity to present the living oracles of the Most High Creator, our Father.